Hey everybody, it's Zivaline, and I thought I'd do a little something different today. Uh, last night, I went to go see Batman vs. Superman with one of my good friends, and I thought that I would give my opinion on the movie. I've seen some negative reviews from critics floating around, and when the creator said that the audience should see it for themselves and decide how good or bad it is, well, it didn't, it didn't exactly impress me as much as I expected it to or wanted it to. So, and this is going to be a spoiler review if you haven't seen the movie or you just don't want spoilers because, hey, this is technically the first day that it's actually supposed to be out. So if you don't want to have any spoilers, then go on, leave, go watch the movie, come back, see if you agree with me or not. I do not want you to be spoiled by this movie, except, let's be honest, the trailer really did ruin everything about that movie. If you've seen the trailer... You have seen everything there is to see about that movie. There is nothing surprising or anything that they really haven't shown you. There's no twists or anything. If you've seen that trailer, you can pretty much guess how the movie's going to go. Okay, first I want to start off with some positive things, even though I know I started with a con with the trailer, but everyone says that. Everyone thinks it. You sit in the theater, you see all that, and there's... Batman vs. Superman, and then there's Doomsday, and suddenly there's Wonder Woman. It's just like, what else can you possibly throw in this movie to keep me entertained, to surprise me? The answer is nothing, really. Okay, to the pros. One thing that I really did enjoy was Batman's character, Bruce Wayne. He was mostly in character. He was... He didn't really speak as much as he needed to. I like Ben Affleck as Batman. His... Bat suit having a voice changer in it instead of him trying to just be this real deep voice misty the way Batman usually sounds. He is, you know, as usual, very intelligent. He has his gadgets and his Batmobile, and I really like how his character works. The movie seems to follow him more than Superman. We It follows him as we get to see how he views Superman and the world around him. In turn, we don't exactly get to level with Superman. We're looking at the world through Bruce's eyes. Alfred is also pretty good in the movie. I like that he is not just Batman's butler, and he's not just there, Oh, yes, sir. Very well, sir. You may go here, sir. He actually helps him with the with the Batmobile, with his gadgets. It almost seems like Alfred is completely the designer of everything Batman while he's there. And he's still Batman's current father figure. He He's telling him, you know, don't do this, go ahead, do this, and I, I'm concerned about your safety, sir, and all this other things. And he has some pretty good lines sometimes at, for stoic Alfred, who is kind of in the back usually in most of the media he's in. Now he's more to the to the foreground. He's actually helping Batman. He He's directly involved with his investigation. I like Alfred in this movie, definitely. At first, I, I was hearing about how the movie isn't very humorous. But then again, in a movie where you expect Batman and Superman to be duking it out, the main thing about the movie is all these, uh, Batman is this vigilante that's going around hurting people and... The cops should do all their jobs, and Batman shouldn't be able to upheave the law just for himself. And then, of course, there's Superman, the alien from another planet who's stronger than anyone else combined, and he can't be killed. And what happens if he were to ever turn on us, or in even the slightest chance that he could? Then, you know, this whole movie, I don't expect to laugh in this movie. I don't want to laugh in this movie. I think that it was, it, it kept the tone of the movie very, pretty well. There are some times where the, it just got a little too lighthearted, if, if only just for a moment, a second of what the screen was showing, and I'm implying of when Lex is trying to get his way into the Kryptonian spaceship and get Zod's body, and he's holding a bowl of, of Jolly Ranchers. You have leeway, sir. You are, the owner of a big, gigantic corporation. You have all, you can deal in any kind of weapon you want. You have all this money. You're basically the bad guy version of Bruce Wayne and Jolly Ranchers, but we'll get to Lex later. Definitely for me, the highlight of the movie is Wonder Woman. 
when she comes at the end of the movie, even the movie recognizes how badass she is. The music swells and probably it's the only time I was able to really pay attention to the music because it gets epic and there are two times where she blocks Doomsday's attacks and when everybody else is cowering behind something and she's got her shield or her, you know, her cuffs, whatever you call them, and then she just, she's okay and the music swells and I was in a, a completely full auditorium and everybody just started clapping when Wonder Woman came. Everybody was just like, oh, thank God, and a competent superhero. Some, something's actually going to start going down. And they were pretty much right. I liked how usually her voice actress in video games and the cartoons usually... I really, really, really like that lady. My only problem was that she was an Amazonian and she's a demigod, but I was, I was always confused. I was like, she has an American accent. She's just a little high and mighty in her tone. Now she has an accent and I kind of like it. It's not a very thick accent, but it's an accent nonetheless. And I just feel like that added more to Wonder Woman. That made more sense. There is a little bit of Bruce Diana shipping in the movie, and I like that. The Justice League cartoon always had me cheering for Bruce and Diana to get together somehow. There were there really was no interaction between Wonder Woman and Superman apart from them beating up Doomsday together and Batman is just kind of off to the side watching them get their butts handed to them. And then he's like, oh wait, yeah, um, I made a weapon that can stop this. Okay, now with all that out of the way, and I'm sorry guys, that really was all the pros that I can think of. Sadly, I have a lot more cons than pros. Back to Lex's character design, since I already brought that up. When I look at this man, I do not think of Lex. If anything, I was really hoping for Lex in this movie to fall into a vat of toxic chemicals, come back up, he's Joker, and he's like, ah, I was just kidding, the real Lex is over there, bald and smart and... Kind of broody, trying to kill Superman. He is far too jovial and cheery, and I really wish that his they would have got someone who is more serious in the role rather than this guy who quips sort of intelligently, but I just cannot take him seriously at all. There's even a section where he's walking towards the Kryptonian ship, and the music is going in time with his step, and I could just could not stop laughing at that. I could not picture him as the big bad of this movie. That is just not the Lex that any of us know is complete and total destruction of character. He was intelligent, yes. He was behind the whole thing, yes. But he was not imposing. He was more humorous and at times crazy than anything else. I really wish he was more like Lex is supposed to be. He does get his head shaved by the end of the movie, but that does not help, especially whenever he's still just crazy and that squeaky voice comes out of his mouth. Next, Superman. Compared to Batman in the movie, Superman is very dull. We don't really get to sympathize with him very much. The screen time is ever given to Superman. It's spent making us like, oh, okay, he loves Lois Lane. Surprise, surprise, he always has. If he has silent scenes, he's probably staring at a TV, just going, oh yeah, the world is starting to hate me. People question me. Oops, I destroyed that. Well, I'm trying to save the world. In, in the way the movie is set up, you really, really, really want to side with Batman. And the other thing is that I might be biased towards Batman's ideology because there was a video game called Injustice Gods Among Us, and the whole plot of that game is what if Superman went evil and he becomes a totalitarian dictator of Metropolis and essentially the world, where Batman is the leader of the Resistance trying to stop him. So there, there is the predetermined Batman versus Superman, not, and not just that, there have been comics where they go at it too, and this being the movie version of that, I expected so much more. Essentially, this whole movie is just, when you go see this movie, you think Batman versus Superman, they are going to be fighting each other. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that about four-fifths of the movie is ideologically talking back and forth, you know, you kill people, will you kill people too? Well, I guess we have a problem then. Well, most of the world hates you. Essentially, it's Batman has at least half the world's population on his side, where Superman has 
maybe one or two people on his side. Batman only hurts people, but he throws them in jail, and essentially sometimes the people he throws in jail end up getting killed because they've been branded by him, but he doesn't nearly hurt as many people as Superman, and thus more people care about what Superman does. Not a lot of people care what Batman does, and this, once again, puts you behind Batman so much better than Superman. You might feel a little bit sorry for him, a little bit, when he goes to defend himself and essentially was going to say, I'm not going to hurt anybody. I try not to. If I do, it's on accident or whatever he was intending to say. And then everyone blows up and everyone's dead. And one thing about that scene is that I really wish that they would have done something to frame Superman at least. Instead, the media was, oh, well, the bomb was in a wheel- wheelchair and it was meant to kill Superman, but instead it killed everybody else. I'm kind of like, well, the media kind of figured that out a little fast, didn't they? And investigators figured that out fast? Everything's blown up. There's nothing left. There's no witnesses besides Superman. Did he make a statement? There was no doubt in anybody's mind that Superman was the one that did this at all. It could have turned into some Watchmen stuff, which essentially is a very similar plot, too, if you take out all the nukes. It's essentially people doubting the super powerful person in the whole world and what is he going to do to us. It could have been a lot better at that. Doomsday's reveal at the end of quote-unquote reveal appearance thing. They also messed up Doomsday's canon. Doomsday was originally supposed to be a abomination kind of experiment creation by the Kryptonians of many, many centuries, millennia past. Instead, Lex just takes Zod's body and revives him as Doomsday. They already messed up Lex, and now apparently Lex messes up everything he touches, too. Doomsday being CGI and 12 feet tall didn't bother me. In fact, I kind of liked him being 12 feet tall. It just bothered me that Doomsday is Zod. Zod is already dead. We should have been done with him. I don't know how you're going to get Doomsday to come into this, or you probably should have just left him out entirely. The fact that he was even shown in, in the trailer was really disappointing, and... Him being in the trailer automatically tells you that Batman and Superman did not finish their fight, which they did not. They fought for maybe three minutes out of the two and a half hour movie. Not only that, the whole lead up to their fight lasts nearly two hours in itself. And and their fight lasts maybe five minutes. It is not worth waiting for. And you also can tell from the movie that, you know, Superman has a cut on his cheek. And everyone knows Batman is not going to go in without some kind of kryptonite, and that's part of the plot, too. Batman, as the underdog, as our main, as the character we're looking at the world through, he is going to get the best of Superman. He might slip and fall, and Superman might get the best of him once or twice, but overall, Batman's going to get the best of Superman, and he did. When he is just about to kill Superman with his kryptonite spear, and he pulls back because Superman tells him, Martha's in danger. And Batman says, why'd you say that name? Why'd you say that name? Tell me why you said that name. It's like Batman wouldn't just suddenly go out onto, why are you talking about my mother this way? And Lois has to come and say, well, Martha's the name of his mom. And Batman suddenly just goes, oh, well, Martha was the name of my mother too. Oh, Superman's mother is in danger. I would be a total hypocrite if I killed him now and did not let him save his mom. Okay, but let's be honest. Their whole fight... The title fight of this movie could have been prevented if Superman just said, I don't want to fight you, I need your help, my mother is in danger, I have been sent here as a bribe to kill you by Lex, who has my mother. Can you help me? But no, he probably tries maybe once or twice with a few words. And then Batman just keeps trying to hurt him, kill him with... For some reason, he starts out with guns first. I don't know why. He knows that isn't going to work. Why Superman, when he first gets his kryptonite, when he gets his weakness done to him and Batman punches him, if you could punch a couple of times, I don't know why, when he gets his powers back, doesn't just pick up Batman and shake him a couple of times and go, you fool, I'm not here to fight you. I need your help. Can you listen to me? For two seconds. But he could try harder to stop the entire fight, and that's sad to say. Batman doesn't listen to him, of course, but Superman had the power to tell him through words. The fact that their whole fight can just just end so easily. Characters are stupid for sake of plot, for sake of title fight, which wasn't even that good to begin with. Towards the very end, whenever Superman takes Doomsday into space and 
the government nukes him, which, hey, good going, government. You know that your savior and hero that you've been trying to defend is up there and you're going to kill him anyway, but I guess you must know that he must be revived by the sun, which gives him his power. Okay, you know, you left Superman up there. He's a corpse riddled by nuclear radiation. And I never once thought that was the end of Superman. You didn't get me there. If anybody fell for that... You're five. And then, of course, at the end, when he deals the killing blow to to Doomsday, and he's weakened by the kryptonite, and Doomsday kills him, they kill each other, and there's this whole memorial service, two coffins, one has Clark Kent in it, and the other one's empty, but everyone thinks Superman's in it. No, you don't have me, movie. I'm not crying for Superman. I don't think he's dead. I think he's probably going to crash through his coffin at the very end of the movie. I didn't quite get that, but I did get something. You spent maybe 10 minutes on this, on Superman's death and trying to make me care and feel sorry for Lois that he was going to propose to her at some time and now she can't because her future husband is dead or whatever. And Batman feels bad because he doubted Superman and they he really shouldn't have doubted him ever. Batman is entirely right. He should, as he always has, keep a, a stock of kryptonite just in case Superman goes bad. The problem is, is that This movie is fueled by his paranoia that Superman will go bad. He attacks Superman before it's time to attack Superman. And he could have waited until he actually does something bad. And he almost kills him just out of paranoia, even whenever Superman wants his help. Another thing is that the whole thing with Martha being in danger, that Batman goes to save Superman's mom, not Superman. What is up with this? What What is up with this? That... She's being held at gunpoint in a room, and then Batman comes in, takes three minutes to knock out all the bad guys in the room, and they're all shooting at him alone. Of course, Batman can handle this. He's Batman, but the problem is, why didn't they shoot her when they realized, oh wait, time's not up, someone's coming here to save her. We should probably shoot her. This isn't the deal. But no, we can't have that. The hero has to win, but here's the other thing. Couldn't Superman just, like, come through the ceiling, pick up his mom, and leave? Couldn't he? But instead he flies out to meet Lex, who is sitting there with his hand on the button to release Doomsday. And how long did this take him to do? Superman should have flown there in no time at all. That scene was very short, but in all things considered, it shouldn't have taken him as long as it took Batman to save Martha for him to release Doomsday at the same time. So why couldn't Superman go save his mom? Does he really need to go face Lex? Can't Batman go face Lex? Does it have to work this way? I guess you needed something for Batman to do, I guess. Because Superman can't do everything, because that's our point. Towards the end, Lex seems to know Superman's identity. He seems to have known Superman's identity from the very beginning, which is horrible. Lex has never, ever known Superman's identity. This just ruins a lot of things. The fact that when Lois is out there in the desert with all of Lex's goons and he holds her to gunpoint and here comes Superman and that bullet, I I must have missed what the importance of this bullet was. I have no idea. Was it supposed to frame Superman 2 or something? And the realization that Lex knew the important people to, to Superman all along and, oh, we even have your mother. You have his mother? How'd you figure out he's Clark? How long have you known he's Clark? Why didn't you do this before? It even seems like he knows who Bruce Wayne is, too. I mean, he got them both together to, you know, spark the fires of their whole big gigantic fight against each other, but it just seems like such a plot hole. Why would Lex know their secret identities? And if he did, why didn't he do something else with their secret identities? Like, reveal them to the public. Anything smarter than I have your mother... You could just go over, fly over there, and get him to help. I should have thought of something about that. Lex is not as smart as Lex should be. Lex should be as smart as Batman. He should be the, he should be the bad guy version of Bruce Wayne in, in wealth, in technology, in intelligence. And he is none of these things. I think I'm, I've said everything I need to say. I was overall disappointed with the movie. If you're a parent and you want to take your younger kids to this movie that want to see Batman and Superman duke it out, they are going to be twisting around in their seat for about two hours waiting for the actual showdown to happen. It's a lot of politics. It's a lot of talking. It's a lot of ideology, just ideological conflicts. 
there's very little fighting and the action you don't really care about much of the action until it actually gets to Superman versus Batman. And by the time that you do get to that fight, it does not entertain that much. It does not last with you. By the end of the movie, I walked out just feeling absolutely dissatisfied. Nobody, when I looked around the theater, nobody else seemed that happy with it either. There was a collective sigh of, well, this should have been titled something else. It seemed a little, like, I I feel lied to just a little bit. It's rated PG-13, but overall, it's got a lot of ideological stuff that you would not, that anybody 13 and younger probably would not care about. They come to see a fight. Most of the adults come to see the fight. And all the ideological conflict was, honestly, I know I'm comparing this to a different movie, but Zack Snyder also directed this. Watchmen did it a lot better. And the entire thing of Batman being, you know, suspicious of Superman and need to stop Superman, Injustice had a much better plot. There was much more action and actual progression towards that goal, rather than standing around watching things happen until he's finally fed up with it. If you want to watch a good version of Batman vs. Superman, then play Injustice, Gods Among Us. It's for PS3, Xbox 360, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. But, and if you're not a gamer, then you can just look it up on YouTube. There's an entire, there are several videos of just all the cutscenes in the game thrown together in one big collective movie seamlessly. That, to me, that was far more what would happen if Superman turned evil rather than what would happen maybe if he turned evil on us one day. He turns evil. He's a bad dude. He actually kills some of the heroes, and he actually goes around destroying Metropolis himself. He does, he breaks a lot of Superman codes. That's what I was hoping for in this movie. I might be biased because I played that game first, but it did the Batman vs. Superman thing better than Batman vs. Superman. I'm sorry that if this review is not up to what you guys think it would be if this does not agree with you, but this is my opinion on the movie. You can like or dislike this video if you agree with me, and I'm not saying do not go spend your money on this movie. I'm saying prepare to be disappointed, prepare to have your face in your hands a couple of times. If you don't mind extremely long exposition that takes up most of the movie, go ahead if that if those few minutes those very few minutes of batman and superman going at each other they really don't leave a single building in their fight it doesn't get too catastrophic it's very private in of themselves superman doesn't really try too hard to fight batman it's a very one-sided fight batman might go down and grunt and groan like maybe three times get back up and get kick the crap out of Superman a whole lot harder than anything Superman did to him, and that's really how it goes. After that, it's just the team up for Doomsday. This movie could have been better if marketing was better. That's all I really have to say on this movie. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm sorry that this dragged on way too long. (laughs) I just had a lot of stuff on my mind. This is something I really wanted to get out before I forgot everything. So thanks for watching, guys, and have a good day.